So let's, let's now talk about how SQL supports transactions. And remember that in general, we want to deal with ACID and DBMSs. I believe that Maria and Maria, Maria DB and MySQL um, ACID is supported, but it has to be enabled. And uh, because there might be scenarios where the overhead of doing transactions um, that they are serializable is relatively high. So if you want extreme performance, then having an ACID database is not the best way to do it. In do on the other hand, if your goal is to maintain consistency of the data, because the data is very important for your organization, you want to run with full transaction, transaction support, essentially an ACID database. The first thing that we need to know is that um, there's a concept called auto-commit. And that's what we have been using P with PSQL uh, during the course so far. And essentially every statement, every, every SQL statement is a transaction. So in other words, if you do select, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, semicolon, this essentially gets wrapped by a begin transaction and a commit. So these two happen implicitly. The DBMS adds it. So every statement essentially has. And the begin is also implicit. We don't have to explicitly say begin. And if we have auto commit, there's no way to roll back a statement. So you run the statement. Let's say that you erase, you delete all the tuples from a table. It's deleted. There's no way uh, to do that change. Okay. Part of the reason to have auto commit is that many users are not even familiar with the concept of transactions. So it will be kind of strange if they do work and they, they forget to do commit and then they discover that none of the work actually happened. Because unless we have auto commit, the impact of the transactions will only be reflected at the moment that the transaction ends with that commit. Okay. So this also means that um, when we have regular non-auto uh, non commit, so we have uh, in non-auto commit, the transaction begins with the first statement. So the moment that we start to send operations to the DBMS, the transaction starts. So we don't have to explicitly say begin. So the begin is really not necessary. And then at the very end, we other so we have our statements, each one of them finished with semicolon in the case of PSQL. And at the very end, we either commit or roll back. Okay. Same as if we have a program, our program starts, we start sending operations to the DBMS, the transaction begins, and then it's only when we finish, um, when we issue a commit that the transaction is finished. If we issue a rollback, then all the operations get undone. This is very important. Um, a good database programmer will never have to undo the work manually in case that the, the transaction should not continue. So let's say that you're doing a reservation for um, a seat in a plane. And then halfway through, you discover that there's something wrong and that the, the reservation cannot continue. You don't have to undo the changes you have done so far to the other tables. All you have to say is roll back and the transaction will be automatically undone from the beginning. So that's a great feature because then the programmer doesn't have to deal with those problems. That's also the reason that when a transaction uh, crashes, because let's say power uh, is gone, the connection to the, to the computer is severe, severe then uh, automatically the transaction gets rolled back. So the programmer doesn't have to worry about leaving transactions in the middle. That is the responsibility of the DBMS. Okay. How do you determine that you have auto commit or non auto commit? This is when you connect to the DBMS.
to the database in the DBMS. Remember the program that you wrote for the assignment? So in that program, in the connect, you specify a bunch of information like the username, the name of the database. In there, if your library supports it, you can actually say, I want auto commit or I want to issue my, my uh, transactions and manually do the commit or the rollback. So that's at the moment that you connect, whether you uh, are in one or the other, okay? Read-only transactions. As the name implies, read-only transactions do not modify the data on the database. So this do not harm, harm, well, I'm actually use the more technical term. Do not affect the consistency of the database. In other words, we can have as many transactions running into Lyft and they will never, never have an impact on our uh, on the consistency of our database. There's no way that these transactions can put the database into an inconsistent state. Why? Because none of these transactions modifies the data in any way. So it's very useful if we want to maximize throughput to tell the DBMS that our transaction is read-only. And how we do that? The very first statement, the very first statement, the first statement. should be set transaction read only. And then anything that comes after cannot have any updates, insert, deletes, etc. It cannot modify the schema of the database. Essentially just select, 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 selects. Okay. It's a good practice to do that because it informs the DBMS in advance that it can interleave other transactions with your transaction. Notice that this doesn't mean that the read-only transaction cannot be affected by other transactions. Other transactions might affect and make our transaction non-serializable. But this transaction, the one that is read-only, cannot affect other transactions. We will see that more in detail um, in um, in the next, next segment. Let's leave it at this and then we'll continue in the next one.